Hiya, Thomas, how are you, right? Yeah, you're all good, thank good. you. Uh, Thomas, what what does this weekend mean? This week, sorry, weekend mean to you playing England at Twickenham? Oh, you know, playing the English is always a massive game, and luckily we got the win last week, which has kept kept the tournament alive for us. And it's a tough tough tournament if you lose the first two. You haven't got much motivation. There's a bit less drive in the squad, but no, we 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 we, we got a good performance after a, a poor start on, from our accounts, and yeah, to go down there and, and have have a crack at them is a great opportunity. After Ireland, how how hard was it to lift yourself to Scotland, and how much of a boost was it to get that win? It was it was a long week. You just wanted to get back out there and, and have another shot at it. To be honest, it it was very easy to get yourself up for it. We we knew we hadn't fired any shots and put much forward, so you were just counting down the days to to got to go back out in a full house and and have a go. And it, it, it's it's not easy, but it's easier to put that performance in at home. We, we were always good in in the atmosphere of the principality, so so that's our next challenge: is try and back that up with an away performance. Um. Scrum so far, I mean, it went well against Scotland. Uh, perhaps you didn't get the reward in Ireland that you should have. How, how have you viewed that part of the set piece so far? Yeah, yeah, with new rule changes, I think it's 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 given us something to, to focus on and scrummage, isn't it? And yeah, it's gone well. We probably haven't got the rewards you wanted, but we're just trying to scrummage to a new letter of the law and, and, and paint good pictures for the refs. And hopefully the more time we do this, the further the new rules go on, the more rewards we'll get and we'll keep building as a pack. We're, we're, we're still quite an inexperienced pack, so the more games we get together, the, the better the set piece, the, the scrum, the, the more will come. So that's a big focus for us. The English Lou said, so you probably know quite well, I've played domestic rugby, Ellis Gens, Joe Marler. Um, what are you expecting from them on the weekend? Uh, from Genji, he's got that mind games. He likes to try and get into that way. He's he's taken on that leadership role at, at Leicester. He's he's playing well. Marler's got a resurgence. He's playing well as well. And Bevan's come through and put his hand up as well. So whoever's there is going to be a tough challenge. And it's a big pack to go against. But as, as a tight end, that's something I relish and look forward to. And whoever it is, I'll, I'll give my best against him. When you say mind games with Ellis Genji, is it verbal, physical? How does that represent itself? Oh, every once, so I, I try not to engage in it. It's part of his game. He's good mates with Johnny Hill, and he's, he's always said part of his games in 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 that. So I let him do that, and and I do me. What have you made of England so far? Yeah, uh, they, they looked good against Italy. They they were well, one decision against Scotland from getting a good result up in Murrayfield. I felt sorry for Luke to be fair, being playing with him a few years, but. No, they they're a young team who've who've got plenty of flair and pl- plenty of foul power and yeah, the, every team this year seems to be a a good team and it's, every game's going to be a good challenge. And nice to catch up the old Exeter lads as well that'll be there. Yeah, I saw a few boys after the Scotland games, Sam Skinner and Johnny Gray and Hoggy, and yeah, it's nice it's nice to have those people to play against afterwards. But on the pitch, it doesn't it doesn't matter who it is to be honest. But afterwards, it's nice to have that beer if we're allowed and uh, have a catch up. And Neil mentioned you haven't won there in seven years, but you had a great win the last time you did win there. What's the key to winning at Twickenham? I've only won there once, which was my I think my fourth cap, which was uh, in the World Cup. So yeah, that that was one of the best days in my my career, and hopefully can emulate that again. Thank you, Thomas. Good luck on the weekend. Cheers. Uh, Graham. Hi, Tom. How you doing? Yeah, good, good. Good. Um, I'm interested in these Ellis Genge mind games again, I'm afraid. Can you uh, can you talk us through them? What, what are they all about? Oh, it's just a throwaway comment. It's just part of his game. It's something Johnny Hill told me once. And yeah, he's he likes it, doesn't he? I just focus on me being me and let him be him, to be honest. Yeah, he, he was uh, he was quite vocal off the field. Uh, a couple of years ago, it seems a bit less so now. Um, has he matured a bit? Do you think? Uh, I, I, I can't tell you that. It looks like he's, he's got that leadership role at uh, Leicester, and seems to be thriving in that. And his performances on the pitch have grown as well. So he's become a world class loose head over the years, and yeah, he, he's he's doing well. Do you think you can get a bit of focus on you as a young player if you come in and you you know you you're probably honest honest in your answers to questions sometimes people people tend to pounce on that don't they yeah everyone likes characters in the game but it it, it depends who you are if you're an introvert it's probably not you if you're an extrovert it, it suits you I just yeah for me it's just being myself whoever that is and 
some people are a bit more louder and out there and they're going to get those comments more often. So, yeah, I think just be yourself for any young player coming through that don't change and just and just do you, as I've said. So was it a bit quieter when, when you played against Mako Manapola? Yeah, obviously, he's he's a world-class lucid as well in his own right. His work rate's up there and, yeah, he doesn't have as much of a, of, of a small talk, but, nah, I'm not getting drawn into that one. It's <laughs> what it is, though. Fair enough. Um, the, the performance against Scotland was very much a reactive performance and a lot of the players, a lot of the forwards said afterwards, you know, they were they were quite hurt by some of the criticism they had uh, after the Ireland game. How do you get that reactive performance going into this England game when you're coming off the back of a win? Uh, yeah, obviously it wasn't the criticism from outside the squad. It was a criticism of ourselves. We, we looked at ourselves as a pack and we just hadn't turned up and... Yeah, you're counting down the days, as I said, to that next game to have a chance. And we've had two weeks now to prepare as a pack and our challenge is to back it up again. That's to go away from home without without the, the stadium and the atmosphere and and do the same down in Twickenham. And yeah, you've just got to get the mindset right, I think. A lot of it's mindset. Everyone who's in the squad's a good player and can go out and play rugby who wouldn't be here. And it's, it's trying to get that unity, that gel as cohesion as a pack and go out there and and, and get in the game early on. England had criticism, obviously, after the, the Scotland game. Um, what did you see in their performance against Italy that they they changed, they tightened up? Anything different? Uh, no, they just looked powerful runners off off uh, off ten, off nine. Marcus got in the game, and and the forwards looked powerful. But but that's the way they've played. That's their DNA, the New England, as they call it. And yeah, it takes time for for, for players to gel in the tournament, and the tough games are often the hardest to to get that unity and. The more game time training they have, obviously they'll improve, and you saw that against Italy. You, you mentioned that phrase, New England. What does that mean to you? I don't know. I just heard you boys say it on the media, so I thought <laughs> I'd quote what you said. To be honest, right. What about New Wales? What's New Wales going to look like on Saturday? Hopefully, just build on on Scotland and the performance there, and fire some shots, and as a pack, get in the game with the more game, the scrum, and the set piece, and. Then around the pitch, just just try and hit some things, moors, carries, rucks. That's for me. That's it's pretty simple. So, and Toby Falatau back in the squad for you. How, how how big is that for you guys? Oh, his, his experience and he's a big game player. So to have him around the environment is great for everyone. There's quite a lot of young back rowers in the squad, and to have him around lifts them, lifts the whole squad. So yeah, anyone of that caliber to have back is always great. Thanks, Tom. Cheers. Uh, Nick. Thanks, Rarity. Um, sorry, Tom, it's a quick one from me and an easy one. Is it Tom or Thomas? I should have asked you this before. What do you prefer? Franny's fine, if you want. What is? Franny. Franny? Yeah, that, that, that's my normal name, so. Okay. I'm, uh, either. Tom, Thomas, anything. You don't mind. All right. Um, nah. just, just going back to Gareth's question quickly on, on, we obviously don't know who it's going to be yet for them, but but technically, what's the difference between scrummaging again, Stelis Genge and Joe Marler? Do, do they feel different? Yeah, they're obviously everyone's got their own scrimmage and the way of scrimmaging and whatever suits them. And I'll analyse, if I'm going to play, I'll analyse who gets picked. In the week, we'll analyse all of them and and have plans. But nowadays, it's more just focusing on yourself, on our on our process as a pack and re repeating that process as much in the week. So whatever you come up against, you're, you're, you're together as a pack and that unity grows. All right, great. Thanks, Tom. Yes. Okay. Um, we've got time for a few more questions. So just those with their hands up, if we can keep it tight. Matt first, then Daniel, then Ben. Uh, hi, Tom. Just just a quick one. Uh, obviously, the introduction of of the breakfoot um, in this championship. Just just talk to me about what what you've experienced in terms of how things have changed. It's just the actual loading, the the weight going through the head onto the shoulders a lot less, which means there's more chance to get a punch. It's less of a cock off before the bite, We're trying to win the weight transfer, and it's more of an actual set into a contest and. I'm, I'm viewing it as a very positive way and it's better for our health. So hopefully it keeps getting reft and people don't just find ways of pretending to have the break foot on and stuff. But as any law comes in, people people try and find a way around it. That's that's rugby, isn't it? People try and find the loophole, but hopefully it can be ref properly. And just another quick one. Um, this is just anecdotal. You may have the stats, I, I haven't, but it, it feels like there's been a few less 
scrum penalties to me in, in this championship. If scrums go down, the refs are just telling scrum half to get the ball away, perhaps more than in the past. Is that something you've seen or am I a bit off the mark? And it in, it, in our game, it feels like that. I felt we, we could have had a few more, but yeah, we, we, the ball needs to be in play. The rugby, no one wants to see seven reset scrums. No one wants to watch that, do they? So I think there's a time and place for it. I think some games have been messy and there's been penalties early on. Some games, if it goes down after the ball's been hooked, the ref's more likely to, to play on. And yeah, it's, it's just about the game as a brand, isn't it? It's got to grow globally and... People don't want to watch. Purists do, but a lot of people don't want to watch seven scrums reset and the, and the school do get involved in that. So it's, it's got to be a positive. All right. Cheers, Tom. Good luck on the weekend. If you cheers. Uh, Daniel? Uh, hi, Tom. Um, we've spoken about the, the criticism that you guys uh, copped off to Ireland, but as a tight five, are they an open play or the set piece? Um, what works against Scotland? You clearly put in an improved performance. Can you pin down what, what you got right? Uh, I think just, yeah, we just got in the game some better collisions, some, some doubles, some, a lot more carrying, a lot more ball off Tommy off nine and getting our carriers on the ball and trying to take out their, their breakdown threats. They've got some world-class jacklers, Scotland, and we ID'd that and what we could do. And then in the set piece, we 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 knew our scrum and more are growing as the tournament goes and more time we spend. And we just, we had success last year up at Scotland with them all. And we, we tried to go back to that and, and it, yeah, it told in the end we 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 got the more try we wanted. And uh, you know, obviously, you know, so many games are, are one of the tie five. Are you feeling confident that you can you can match England? Where do you see their strengths are? Yeah, they're they're a very good pack, but obviously, whoever plays for Wales has got to have that mindset that you're going to go out there and dominate at least parity, but try and dominate and give a a good platform for the backs launch. And yeah, England will be a great test down there. They've got some great forwards, and yeah, hopefully, we can come on top. We'll, we'll give it all. Good luck. Cheers. Thank you. And then we'll finish up with Ben. Hey, Tom. Uh, you mentioned messaging Luke uh, Kandicki after the thing that's going game. What, what did you say to him to try and, I guess, encourage him a bit? Oh, I, I think it was his son's birthday. So I think I just okay. messaged him saying good luck on that. I didn't want to didn't want to bring it up. I, I just, yeah, it's a, as a front five forward, you don't want to be on your wing going up for a high ball. That's that's your idea of a nightmare. So I, I just felt for him watching it. But as as the England boys have said, they all got round him. That that's what squads do. And yeah, he'll he'll bounce back. So he did against Ireland, uh, Italy. Sorry, you played with him for so long. Were you guys quite close when you were at Exeter together? Yeah, he's my roommate Exeter. Obviously, played a lot of years with him. And yeah, it, it, it's it's going to be exciting if if we both get to play against each other. Those, those rivalries are always. Fun on the pitch and better afterwards. Great. Thank you. Cheers. All right. Thanks all.